During this virtual macaque lesson, we are going to be creating this super adorable thank you bear. So before we start today, stop and think, who are you most thankful to at the moment? There are so many things you can do to personalize this gorgeous little bear for someone who is super special to you. Now to create these gorgeous little bears, we are using watercolor pencils. Now, if you don't have watercolor pencils, you can absolutely follow the steps using normal pencil colors as well. You'll be doing all the same color blends. I am using a sheet of mixed media paper, nine by 12. You can use larger or smaller. You can also use a watercolor paper or cardstock, something a little heavier that can take some water. I have a sketching pencil, an eraser, my water pot paper towel, a medium sized round headed paintbrush, and at the very end, I will be adding a couple of dazzling highlights using a small amount of white acrylic paint and a very small paintbrush. If you do not have a paintbrush this small, you can also use a sharp pencil to apply the paint as well. Now to begin our gorgeous little thank you bears, we're going to start with an oval in the middle for our bear's head. And that's gonna help us position everything else in our sketch. So I'm gonna come roughly to the center of my page and lightly with a nice gentle wispy line, I'm going to sketch a very loose oval. When you are sketching, you want to keep your lines light and wispy so it's easy to change shapes and move things around if you need to. Now keep your lines delicate and soft so it's easy to erase. I'm actually going to make mine a little bit darker just so you can see it better, but keep yours lovely and light. Okay, so there I have an oval for my bear's head and mine is kind of tilted a little bit to the side. I like that. Now underneath my bear's head at an angle, I'm going to do the sign that he's holding onto. So it's not gonna be straight across. I'm gonna do my diagonal line at a slight angle that tucks under his chin. So he's holding onto this and his chin is gonna come just over the front of the sign there. So it comes past his head a little bit. And then I need to come down, same angle, kind of to the side there. And then back across again. It's not a huge sign, he's only a little bear. There we go. Now again, this is a loose sketch. You can change shapes, you can add things, really change them up and make them your own. What I'm going to do now is sketch where his arms are coming around holding the sign. So he's got a little corner of his shoulder here, tiny little bit. So imagine his shoulder running behind. I'm not drawing, I'm running behind the sign here. And then his little paw is gonna come around in front. I say little, I've got a big old teddy bear here. Super cute, like that. So I've got one paw one big old paw wrapping around there. I'm gonna take out the lines that I don't want straight away. So the line that goes down through the bear's paw, that needs to go away. So his hand is in front of the sign now. Now I want to bring this side of the sign in just a tiny bit more over here. Now this one's gonna be up a little bit higher where he's at an angle. So again, shoulder comes down. His paw's gonna come around here. And again, holding on to that sign a little bit higher up. Roughly trying to get those paws the same size. There we go. So the sign goes behind his hand, his hand is in front. So our little bear's got two hands there holding onto the sign. Now my bear is gonna be absolutely adorable with some giant feet. So I'm gonna do an oval that actually touches his foot here, right the way up, and then comes down to the ground. He's gonna have big old bear feet. So I'm gonna turn this shape into a big oval that's tilting out to the side a little bit here. There we go. And I want to do the one that's over on the left, leaning to the side a little bit, kind of touching his paw there. There we go. Getting them roughly the same size. It doesn't have to be perfect. And again, let's take out all of the parts of the sign that you can see through his feet because his feet are in front and the sign is behind him. 
there we are. We're getting a very nice looking bear shape now. He's missing ears. I'm going to go back up to the head and start putting some details in. Putting the ears in is really going to help to show that my bear's head is at an angle. So I'm going to draw a little line down through the middle here at an angle, very lightly so I know I can remove this line. Now from here I want to roll around to the side and I'm going to have one big old ear coming off the side of his head. Lovely. Now look at the distance from the ear to the center where our visual marker is. We want roughly that same distance here over here, which is why we did this line down the center to help us break down those spaces and shapes a little bit more. There we go. So one ear is up a little bit higher to show that his head is kind of flopping at a slight angle there. Beautiful. Now whilst I have this line, I'm going to use it to get his little muzzle in. Muzzle being this bit down here. So what I'm going to do is sketch a little circle shape here. Down quite low on his face. I'm picturing a rather adorable looking bear with a very cute facial expression. There we are, nice and wispy. Now I want to bring his chin down just a little bit further. So I'm kind of sculpting the bottom section of his face here. So he's got his cheeks that go out to the side and a chin that drops down a little bit lower. And then he's going to have a very small nose, a nice little triangle shape here in the middle. Now what I'm gonna do is come down from the nose just a little bit following that line down and I'm gonna do a big arch that comes out to the side. This is one happy little bear and another one out to the other side. Oh, he's gorgeous. I'm gonna use my eraser to go in and take out what I don't want. Now his eyes are gonna be just above the little muzzle shape here. And I'm doing little crescent shapes where he's smiling so hard his eyes are kind of squinting a little bit. And again, I can exaggerate that a little bit later on. Lovely, and he is gonna have a nice big rosy cheek over here as well. There we go, looking adorable so far. Now, what I'm going to do for my bear is give him some little flowers that he's holding on to as part of his thank you. So I'm gonna do a little circle that's up above his paw here, and that's gonna be the center of a little daisy. Now I'm just doing super fun little cartoon daisies you can do anything you want for yours. Perhaps you want to do some roses or some daffodils. You can do whatever you want. I'm keeping mine very, very simple. I'm just going to do two little daisies that kind of stick out to the side here. And their little stems come down, tuck into his paw, and then just shoot out the other side a little bit so you can see where he's holding on to them, where he's holding on to the sign as well. You can give him whatever you want to hold to say thank you. Now on the other side, on this uh, paw here, I would like him to have a balloon up here. He's gonna have a love heart balloon. I've got a lovely big space up here. So what I'm going to do is actually sketch the love heart first. So following up, so it's gonna be the bottom of my love heart here and I'm gonna do a nice big rounded balloon. That's a big old love heart. Now the balloon is actually another really good place where you could sneak some details if you wanted to have something written on your balloon. There we are, and the string is here. It's gonna come down from the balloon. There we go, and just tuck into his paw. Perhaps I could have the string kind of trailing off to the side there. Lovely, he's looking absolutely adorable. Now what I've got to do now is put something on my sign. Now I'm going to keep mine simple. I'm going to do a big thank you to everyone. Everyone who is out there working super hard. There are so many people out there to give a huge, great big thank you to. I couldn't possibly list them all. So everything about my bear is just screaming thank you. So I'm going to do a great big thank you on my bear's board here. So the easiest way to sketch in letters is to do a very thin line first. Now. Here's a good trick. Thank you. Thank has five letters in it. 
So find the center a little bit higher up and start with the A in the middle. This is a really good trick for making sure you have enough space for all your letters. Then work out from there. So I'm going to have a H here and a T and an N and a K. So I found my central letter first, which was an A. Rather than starting over here at the T and running out of space, I started right in the middle. Very good sneaky trick there. And then U. I'm going to do a big U underneath. So Y O U. There we go. Now I'm going to make my letters a little bit chunky so I can add some lovely color to them. You can do some fancy scripture on yours. You could do it in your own handwriting to make it even more about you saying a big personal thank you. You can do whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. That's the most important thing. This is your thank you. So before I go any further, I'm going to use my eraser to take out all of the lines that I don't want. So these are the lines here that cut in front of the ears. They're going to go away. My line down through the center of the head that I used as a guideline. Any visual markers that we've used that have been super useful that we don't need anymore. I've got some little wispy lines going down through the center of my writing. Well, I think I'm good. I think I'm ready to start blasting this bear with some color. Now I'm going to do like a lovely golden yellowy brownie shade for my bear. You can do whatever you want for yours, but if you want to follow my same steps, I'm going to start with the yellow first, yellow watercolor pencil. You can also follow these steps using normal pencil color and just don't add water to get that watercolor look. I'm going to do a quick blast of yellow around the outside edge of my bear. Now I want my bear to be getting a little bit lighter towards the center. So I'm focusing my color towards the outside. When I add my water over the top, it's going to push this color out a lot further. There we go. Staying away from that muzzle shape in the middle. Lovely. Just a super quick blast of watercolor pencil. That's all it takes. When you add the water, it really does brighten these colors a lot. Now, I've just realized I've forgotten an area. The little circle pads in his feet. So what I'm going to do is another rounded shape on each one of his paws like that. Now, if you want to give his toes even more shape, which I think I might do actually, I'm going to go in like that and just create the illusion that he's got little toes there. So I'm just doing little lines that cut in a little bit. Oh, I like that. Very cute. Okay, so continuing to blast a little bit of this yellow. Not much. You don't need very much at all. There we are. Now I'm thinking ahead to my letters. I might as well add yellow wherever I'm going to need it. Now I'm going to do some rainbow colors on my letters. So I'm going to do a little blast of yellow on a few of them. That one and the N and the O. There we are. And the centers of my flowers. Yep, they're going to be yellow as well. So super rough, super sketchy, don't need to be super detailed with this. And I'm going to go with my orange pencil next. So wherever I've done yellow, very, very lightly, I'm using a, just a tiny amount of pressure to add a little amount of orange over the top. Remember, this is going to turn into paint. And if I press super hard with the orange, it's going to leave more orange on the surface which is going to mix with my yellow and give me a super bright, strong orange. And I don't want that. I want a very soft, delicate orange. So I'm adding a very light pressure, making sure I'm only leaving a gentle, delicate amount of orange behind. So I end up with a very soft shade, not a super powerful shade. There we go, over the top. Beautiful. And then I'm going to add some orange to my T pressing hard on the letters. So you can see the difference, light pressure, 
hard pressure. Two very different shades of orange there. Fantastic. And I'm going to do the U as well, I think. And maybe just a tiny bit of orange on my yellow letter as well there. Wonderful. So I don't just add it to one area. Wherever I'm going to have orange featured in this bear, I go ahead and add it whilst I am using that color. So take a second before you put your orange down. Look at yours. Are you going to have orange anywhere else? Are you doing the same as me or taking it your own way? So add that color wherever you need it. There we are. Now, next up, I'm going to use my brown. Now with my brown, again, right where my orange is, I'm adding just a little bit of this. All of these colors, the yellow, the orange, the brown, they are going to mix together when I add my water over the top. Now, even if I wasn't doing watercolor, if I just decided to do normal pencil color and not add water, I would still end up with a very lovely looking texture. If you're doing that though, I would recommend bringing your color in a little bit further, a little bit closer to the center, rather than having it just on the outsides like what I have here. This is just our base coat to give our bears a lovely color. There we go. Don't rush your bear. Take your time. Remember, this bear is a symbol of how thankful we are to all those amazing men and women who are working so hard and are being so brave. So we want to make sure this little guy looks spectacular. Take your time. There we go. Now I'm ready to start getting some water on here and bringing my little bear to life. So here you can see I've got my water pot, my paper towel and my paintbrush. Now, when you're adding water to your watercolor, you only need a tiny amount. So I'm gonna go into my water. Very important step now. Dab on your paper towel. Get most of the water off so your bristles are just damp. We do not want to super soak the paper. Now, rotate your work to make an easier angle. What we're going to do is work in a little circle motion, churning those beautiful colors together. And can you see how they're all mixing? just like paint would mix on a palette, giving me this beautiful, lovely golden bear. He looks gorgeous. Now I'm working from the outside, gently pushing that color towards the center of the bear where I haven't added any color. And it's giving him a really gorgeous little glow. Oh, he looks adorable. Same again, little bit of water, dab on the paper towel. Let's do the same over here, little circle motion. Make sure you stay in that little circle until you're happy that your color is blended in. Perhaps you don't want yours totally blended. Maybe you want a little bit of that scruffy texture behind. Now I am going to be adding some scruffy texture over the top of my bear when it dries as well. But you can most definitely leave some of that rough texture behind right now. Oh, he looks so gorgeous. There we are, now I'm gonna move down to the paws. Exactly the same technique. So starting with the dark on the outside, then gently bringing it in. Lovely, and the other paw. Tiny, tiny amount of water is all that's needed. There we go, so far looking very cute. Taking everything off my brush, just a tiny bit of water, and I'm gonna go through using just the tip of the brush to dazzle those letters a little bit. So activating the watercolor, getting it to stand out a little bit brighter. There we are. Now when you're doing watercolor pencils, you have to be patient. Now we're gonna cycle to a new area and let everything dry. So I'd quite like to add a nice base coat to my balloon up here. Now for my balloon, I'm gonna do a nice bright pink. So what I'm going to do is turn my work upside down. Now I'm gonna have a little bit of light shining on my balloon over here. So I'm gonna do like a little crescent shape here, like that. Now I'm gonna leave those white. I'm gonna work around the outside and leave those areas nice and light. 
So using the tip of my pencil, the very point, going around the outside. As I come into the center, I'm taking off the pressure, getting a little bit lighter as I come in. There we are. So I have a lovely two-tone going on from the dark to the light in the middle. Do the same over here. So my pencil is following around the outside shape of the balloon. I'm not running into the edge. My pencil glides around that shape. There we are, nice and dark on the outside. Let's turn them up the right way and take a look. Lovely. And a little bit at the bottom there. Gorgeous. Now my bear is going to have some delicate rosy cheeks as well. So what I'm going to do later. Now my flowers here are white, but I'm going to have a little splash of pink low down on my petals here. So I'm adding just a tiny bit of this watercolor pencil and I'm going to use my water to get that to slide down the petal. So I have a lighter tips at the end and a darker pink towards the center. And the last place I want to do a very, very light shade of pink is on the pads of his feet here. So very, very lightly, I'm going over with just a very, very gentle stroke. Remember, the less color you leave behind using the pencil, the lighter it will be when you add water. So the pads of the feet are going to be very, very light compared to our balloon up there. Now again, I'm going to use my paintbrush. Getting most of the water off. And I'm going to start on my flowers here. Each petal, just pushing that pink down just a little bit. Jiggling the brush about to activate the watercolor. And then just sliding the brush down the petal. Pushing that pink down. Lovely. I'm going to do a little dark outline on these later on to get them to really stand out. Right now I just want that little hint of pink on there. You can do whatever color you want for yours. It doesn't have to be pink like this. If you want flowers at all, what else could your bear be holding? Your bear could be holding anything. Perhaps if you're saying a great big thank you to doctors and nurses, your bear could be holding a stethoscope or something to make him look like a medical bear. Pads of his feet, little circle motion, getting a nice even blend all over those paws. Gorgeous. So cute. Look at him coming to life. And the other one. <laughs> he looks beautiful. Now I'm going to turn my bear upside down again on his head. So I can do the balloon up here. Now tip of the paintbrush is facing the outside edge, sweeping around. I'm doing the best I can to stay away from my highlight area. If you do go over it, it's okay. We're going to bring some highlights in at the end and we'll just include that one. But do the best you can to avoid it. There we are. So it gets lighter towards the center. Turning again. A little bit of water. Dabbing, so important that you dab your brush to get most of the water off. See how my paintbrush is following the shape of the balloon. I'm not going straight up and down. I'm following the shape of that balloon, getting that lovely rounded arch to it. There we go. And I'm going to just let that balloon dry. Do you see how it doesn't look flat? It's lighter in the center where it's got a highlight and a beautiful dazzling hot spot on the side. So it's starting to look rounded and not flat because I've changed the color, the depth of the color from a dark to the light. That's all it takes to bring something to life. Now we're going to be enhancing that a little bit later on, but first we absolutely need to let it dry. Now my bear has had a good amount of dry time. I'm going to give him just another minute. And I'm going to do a little bit more on my letters down here. So I'd like to add a green, I think. And I'll do a green on my K over here. Uh, 
And for my A, I think I'll do a blue. I'm liking these rainbow letters. Now, while I've got the blue in my hand, what I'm thinking of doing is adding a little bit of shadow to my sign rather than having it just bright white. So I'm going to just scratch back and forth with my blue here, just a little bit in the corners, a little bit down low. Not very much at all. It doesn't take much. There we are. And then for this one down here, I'm going to do a bit of pink and a bit of purple in there. So I've got everything, all those beautiful colors on my letters. So a bit of pink and a little bit of purple on there. I'm actually going to add a tiny bit of red to my T as well, I think, to get him a little bit darker. Again, whilst I'm waiting for areas to dry, I'm going to go in and get my green stems in here. Just cycling around, working in all different areas whilst I'm waiting for my first areas that I painted to dry. That way my colours aren't going to be running into each other. Lovely! So using just a tiny bit of water to activate those letters. Again, just a little bit on the very end of my brush. Make sure you keep cleaning your brush off so you're not contaminating your colors. Do all of your yellowy orangey shades first. There we go. And I added red to my tea, so I'm going to make that a little bit brighter. When you add water over the top of a watercolor pencil color, it really heightens the color and makes it stand out beautifully. There we are. Now I must clean my brush off before I go into my other colors so I'm not dragging that red into a different area. Now seeing as I've got the blue, what I'm going to do is very, very lightly, just using the very tip of my brush, being very careful not to touch my letters because I don't want to drag any of those colors out. I'm just going to soften that blue that I added around the outside. And then my green. Beautiful. And do the stems as well, seeing as we're doing the green. And then lastly, you got it, the purpley pink. Oh, that looks lovely. Very nice. I'm just going to add a little bit of that pinky tone down low on his feet as well. Had some left on the brush there. Okay, now my bears had some serious drying time whilst I did all the other colors. So I'm going to go in with my brown and add a little bit more shadow to bring him to life and make him come out a little bit more. When I say come out, I mean bulge out of the paper so he pops out and doesn't look flat. So what I'm going to do again, I know areas are wet. So I've got to be very careful where I rest my hand. I do not want to put my hand in wet paint and then track that wet paint across my beautiful white paper. Mm -mm, don't want to do that. So again, starting on the outside here, going in, being kind of scraggly this time with my brown, kind of digging it in leaving a little bit of texture behind. I want that same scruffy looking texture going up over his head. I think I might do a couple tufts of hair sticking out here as well. I'm doing a super cute scraggly old bear. I think they're the cutest to be honest. You can't beat an old bear. They're gorgeous. There we are. Gorgeous little bear. A little bit down here. Now what we are missing is the middle of his ears. So with my brown here, I'm just going to do like a little hook shape there in the middle. There we go. Same over here. Coming back. With the brown. Oh, lovely. This is my favorite bit. Getting the shadows and the highlights on here and just watching your work come to life. It's so satisfying. Beautiful. Now that dark's coming down around under his chin. There we go. You can be as scruffy and as scraggly as you want to with your pencil color. He's your bear. 
really work on some texture. I'm going to be adding a little bit of a dark illustrated line using black very softly and we can use that black to enhance that texture as well. Here we go. A little bit over his nose, just a tiny bit over the nose there. Oh, he's so adorable. Now, got to do the same on his arms and on his feet as what I've done on the face there. So with the dark here, bringing it around, comes around the front of his paw here. There we go. I'm pressing nice and hard to get that color to really stand out. So the brown here, I'm going to use it to really separate those toes. Remember, I went in and added some toes to this bear. Same on the other foot. There we go. Now I'm again using my paper towel here. It's getting quite wet. I'm finding a little bit of a dry corner over here. Into the water, dabbing it on the paper towel, and I'm going to very gently activate this brown. I do not want to blend it out too far. By adding water over the top, I'm heightening the color, making it a little bit brighter. But I really don't want to push it out too far. So I'm pretty much just running my brush over the top of where that brown is sitting. Blending it into the lighter areas a little bit. But on the ears, I really want to just keep it where you see it sitting. Look at that cute little hairstyle. Perhaps you've got a girl bear. Maybe your bear has a bow or something. I do like the idea of doing a doctor or nurse bear with a stethoscope. I'd quite like to try one of those. There we go. Same on the other side, very important. You see me taking the water off my brush. I'm dabbing it to get most of that water off. And then we're going down onto his big old bear paws. Beautiful. See, I've still kept that slightly lighter glow in one area to make him look a little more rounded. And on his feet as well. Oh, he's so adorable. There we go. Oh, he's looking beautiful. Now, my balloon is dry. I'm going to just enhance the outside with a little bit of red. So again, I'm waiting for my bear to dry, turning my work upside down. And I'm going to do just a little bit of red. As I come onto the balloon, I'm taking off the pressure, blending it into the pink. There we go. So nice and hard on the outside, pressing lighter as you come in, tickling the paper, getting lighter and lighter. Very careful to avoid my beautiful hot spots there. Now, if you haven't added any writing to your balloon, it's not too late. This is a lovely space to add something. Perhaps you know someone who's not very well right now and you might want to make a get well balloon for them. That's a very sweet idea. There's so much you can do with this little guy to really make him your own or her. Now, I did say I wanted my bear to have some very gentle little rosy cheeks. So here I go with a very light pink. Now, He's got his big smile that comes up to here. So I'm going to very lightly, in a little circle motion, add a very, very gentle rosy cheek. Now I'm not adding water to that. I'm going to leave it how it is, that little rosy color there. Same on the other side, right in the corner of the eye. Very, very gentle. 
There we are, super adorable. Okay, now I'm actually ready to start going into my work with a little bit of black. Now I am using a black watercolor pencil, but I will not be adding water over the top of this pencil. I want it to stay a very sharp, thin line. So for this step, make sure your pencil is lovely and sharp. You could also use a fine liner if you wanted to, but if you want to use pen, make sure your bear is totally dry if you have used watercolor pencil or watercolor. If it's still wet, then the ink will bleed and run into the water that you have on your bear. So make sure it is dry first. Now I'm gonna start in an area that I know is dry. So again, I'm gonna flip upside down and I'm gonna do a nice dark line going around my balloon using short, sharp, wispy strokes. So here we go. Now for this, you really want to make sure that your pencil stays lovely and sharp. The duller our pencil gets, the thicker our line will get, and we want it to be lovely and thin. There we go. Perfect way to add any little details as well. So we have a string that goes all the way down. So again, I'm gonna to turn to make an easier angle, following my little string all the way down, in front of my bear's ear, in front of the sign. There we go tucks in behind my little bear's paw and this string just kind of coils off to the ground here. I'm going to have it looping back around. There we are. That's the string of my balloon. Okay, I'm going to work in another area that I know is dry. I'm going to work on my bear's face, on his nose here. So this little shape here for his nose, this little upside down triangle. I want it to be nice and dark. Now, Leave a little highlight on there if you do not have any acrylic paint or ways of adding a highlight later on. So if you don't, leave a little white spot just like we did on the balloon there. You can leave a little patch on the nose. I'm going to add some white over mine. So I'm happy to fill my nose in nice and dark. Coming down a little bit. Same with the eyes. I'm going to add a little tiny glimmer later on using a white acrylic paint so I'm filling all of the eye in right now pressing nice and hard getting a lovely dark little eye there do the very best you can to get your eyes the same size and the same shape unless you've got a winking bear my goodness that would be cute maybe your bear is winking thank you and a little cheeky wink I'd like to see one of those. If you've done a winking bear, please share. I would love to see that. There we go. Oh my goodness, isn't he just looking gorgeous the more he comes to life? There we go. So followed down here, we're gonna do just a little bit, lightly going off to the sides. Now I'm just kind of waiting for a second. I know it's a little bit wet over here and I don't want to run my pencil into it. So I'm gonna to skip to another area that I know is dry. I'm gonna start going around the outside of my sign here. So again, short, sharp strokes all the way, tucking under his little chin there. Now as you're doing your outline, stop and think about your layers. What goes in front of what? So my flower stems go in front of the sign. So they're gonna have a little bit of lines that come down in front, but the sign stops at the stem and then starts on the other side. So we're building up some nice layers on here. And I'm gonna go over and do my flowers now. So my petals go out a little bit longer, past where the pink finishes. There we go. So you can see that my petals have a little bit of a light finish to the ends. Now perhaps you didn't do flowers on yours. You might have something totally different that you're outlining. Work with what you have. There we go, my letters are dry, so I'm gonna do just a teeny bit of dark, not around the whole way, just kind of accenting. especially on the lighter letters to get them to stand out a little bit more. 
really is up to you how much detail you want to work into. Now his little chin here, little fluffy chin, drops down just in front of the sign. Oh, I love that. It's like his chin is just tucking the sign up there. Beautiful. Oh, he's such a gorgeous old bear. You just want to give him a hug, don't you? And then the side of the mouth going up. So this gorgeous little dimple that's holding up that rosy cheek there. Same on the other side. There's all sorts of bears, but this is definitely a cuddly bear. So now my work is completely dry. What I'm going to do is go around the outside of my bear using just a black pencil color, adding some really cute little scraggles to him to make him look a little bit kind of old and tattered. Just little bits of fur sticking out. He's a very loose sketch, so do not worry about going into too much detail. Get that nice little dark pocket in the ear that curves around. There we are. He's got one little ear standing out there. Let's do the same on the other side. Now, as you're doing the little wisps of hair, start on the bear's ear or wherever you are on the body and take off the pressure as you wisp away. So lift, lift the pencil as you go away. That way your little hairs will end up with nice, fine points to them. So never start out here and go back to the bear. Always start on the bear and wisp away to get those lovely little bedraggly scraggles. Beautiful. Now don't go too crazy with the texture. Do a little bit. Stop. Make yourself stop. Lean back and look at what you've created. We don't want to make it look as though our poor teddy bear has been electrocuted with hair sticking up. We just want him to look a little bit bedraggled and old. So don't go too wild with this texture. We do want to get his ear to stand out though. So let's go around our entire bear, adding this adorable little texture. There we go, and I'm just going to do a little arch line that comes down his head here where he's been sewn together. Gets a little bit lighter as it goes into the light area there. I think he looks absolutely gorgeous. 
And the last thing my bear needs, because he is floating in the air, that little balloon is holding him up, I'm going to do a little bit of a horizon line behind him to show that he's sitting down on the ground. So running parallel with the bottom of my page here, I'm going to do a line that runs across behind him. So starting very lightly, goes into his hands on the other side. Just check that straight. Lovely. Now I'm going to just make it a little bit darker. There we go. And then just to show that he's sitting on the ground, I'm going to add just a few scratchy lines behind to help ground him a little bit more. Now the very last thing I'm going to do to my old bear here, who's looking extremely grateful, is add a couple of twinkling highlights. So I've got a little paper plate here, a very small paintbrush, and a tiny bit of white acrylic paint. You can also use a sharp pencil to apply the paint as well. That's a sneaky trick, very good for getting some fine details in if you don't have a paintbrush that's very tiny like this. Now I'm going to start with just a teeny bit of paint, absolute teeny amount, and I'm going to do a little tiny highlight in each one of my bear's eyes. So using the very tip of the brush, one little dot and another little dot. Oh, look at those twinkly little eyes. That is just gorgeous. And then his nose as well. I want to have a little bit of a shine on his nose. If you haven't already left a little white gap, look at that shiny little button nose. That's beautiful. Now add highlights where Ever you would like to. What's lovely about doing this technique with acrylic at the end, if you go too heavy with your highlights or add something that you think, oh no, I actually don't like that, let it dry. As soon as it dries, you can go back over the top of it using pencil color and you'd never know it was there. So where else can I add a couple of twinkly highlights? I'm going to add a few little spots to the center of my flowers here. Lovely. I already have a lovely shine on my balloon, so that doesn't really need any highlights. But if you have closed down your balloon and it's one solid color, add a little bit of a lovely sheen on the edge using a tiny bit of white acrylic paint there. Now I'm going to add a little, little bit of white scruffles to the ends of his ears here. A little bit of a highlight. Again, I'm just roughing up my bear a little bit more. This is optional. I'm doing a few tiny little spots for a little bit of detail. The bears look gorgeous. It's up to you how much detail you want to work in now. And then a teeny bit to the tops of some of my letters. Again, just a teeny bit of fun detail wherever you want. If you add something and think, nope, too much, let it dry and you can take it away. So I'm finishing up with just a little bit of a light cross hatch on the floor to make it look as though the floor is coming out towards us so the lines come away from the center of the bear. Just a little bit of fun detail and my bear is done. Look at him dancing away with his thank you sign. Now that was a super fun, super grateful piece of work that we have just completed. I can't possibly list off the amount of people that I would love to say a huge thank you to. Everyone, everybody is working super hard in order to adjust to some big changes we've had to make from mums and dads who are learning how to homeschool, to students who are learning how to be homeschooled, to the amazing doctors and nurses on the front lines, to the first responders, paramedics, doctors. I couldn't possibly list off everybody that I owe a massive thank you to. So this little bear is just for you guys. And at Virtual Macart, we have some absolutely amazing little artists. So you're going to get a whole load more bears coming your way very soon. Guys, please share your grateful bears. In the comments, I would absolutely love to see how you've changed these bears up to make them your own. Now, these little bears really do make an adorable thank you. And you can personalize them so much. So now you know how to make this gorgeous little fella. Have a go at making another one but make him into a special gift for someone who you are especially thankful for.